Well, there's a, a grandmaster, Jan Christoph Duda. And I was thinking he should have a, a child and name it Zippity. And then his child's name would be Zippity Duda. Alexa just got really bright. Can you tone it down? <sighs> Look how bright it is. It's just, it, it just sits my, I guess I could just turn it around and then it's, it's less bright. Can still hear me too. Okay, so I was going to show opening tree. What I did, because Lele plays uh, almost uh, exclusively on chess.com, so I loaded in her her games uh, for the black side and then also for the white side. Oh, I was preparing England earlier. I don't know if I'll actually go for England, but... Uh, but yeah, so so she has, um, I guess, close to 6,000 games total. So for those who haven't seen this before, it basically creates a tree of like all the games she's ever played and then shows the moves that she's played from this position. I wanted to check what she plays in, yeah, like mainline E4. Because I know she plays Sicilian. But then Knight F3. Ah, does she play Knight Orf? Oh, she plays the classical. Oh, interesting. I have a cool line against this. She plays e5 here. Okay. I might avoid that. f3 could be interesting. And then c4. I might throw in one of these. Because usually classical Sicilian players don't usually play against Marazzi Bind. I could real quick check like Mora. I'm sure I'm missing like some recommendations or a lot of uh, white suggestions. Close Sicilian is another option. I have uh, I just have like a few minutes to to choose. Yeah, she would transpose into Alapin here. So I play knight f three. Yeah, this is a line, and then I think knight a three is a move, if I'm not mistaken. Nice thing about opening tree, I can um I can just open a Lee Chess window and then analyze from here. So she played she's mostly encountered castling, but yeah, knight a three she's only encountered once. It's tricky because idea is knight b five. So a six. I mean, objectively, it's completely fine for black. Wait, castling. We'll just follow the main line. So castling, she's played g6. g6, not the main move. Wow, knight g5. I hope she's not watching here. Because <laughs> this is, I'm already discovering like some cool, cool idea. Um, I mean... E6 is the most common, and then, okay, then takes and get some IQP position. Ah, 95 is cool. It's takes, takes, takes. There's the knight hanging. And some knight C4 idea. I haven't looked at these lines, like, so closely in the past. More games on Lee Chess. So E6 most expected. 94. Did she play against this? No, she's never encountered knight g5. I think I'll go for the Smith Mora. Because that's the one like tricky thing I prepared right beforehand. But thank you, DJL, gifting two subs to Von Papalot and Smack. Ma Bishop. Okay, it's Smith Mora time. Um, yeah, so I know she was in my chat when I was preparing this, but I think she said she wasn't really watching. Um, I'll have to remember the line. So I think it's d6 takes takes knight a3 a6 castling uh, g6 and then knight g5. But at some point I take, oh, if e6 I take, 
Also, I should note there's a gambit here. If if black takes, I take back and just have some nice kind of development with the bishops. Okay, so d5 is very similar, just transposes. Yeah, it's very clear, like she has a a pretty classical repertoire. Um and if she was like more prepared for these tricky lines, she'd probably just be punishing me. Um but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what she goes for here. I think the one game I found in this position, she played g6. And I should note, even though this started as a Smith Mora, I guess people can see uh, this transposed into an Alapin. Like Knight of Six, um, basically it's a C3 Sicilian. Yeah, okay, E6 is a main move. And then, oh, I, I prepared. Uh, I prepared the next two moves: bishop here and then knight e5. Yeah, it was like right before the match. Uh, I quickly check this line. So it goes to show like the power of preparation, because I just save so much time. Um, what was the main? Oh, the main move was knight e5 and the knight c4. So bishop f6 is now a new move for me. Um, very logical, though. I mean, f4 comes to mind, but then knight d5. I don't think black is threatening to take. But I should probably defend at some point. And if I play f4, knight d5, there is knight c4. Like we tr oh, then, then we trade. Uh, I'm not sure what to do. Actually, that line might be okay. I took a lot of time. I should have I should have found like an easier move to play. But it might get sharp soon. It's knight d5. Knight c4. So what I'm calculating is knight takes e3, knight takes d6. We trade queens and minor pieces. Black would have the bishop pair, but I have two knights. Um, that's a good move. I play d5. Knight c2 is also a legal move. I want to be tricky, though. Like, I want to make it so she like takes the pawn and then I, I have tricks, but... Oh, wait, this is... That's a consideration. D5. Idea being that I'm hitting the knight. And if knight takes, I play knight c4. It's so essentially a gambit. Then just queen e7. Yeah, I'm not not thrilled with the position actually. Queen h5 doesn't really do much. Okay, let's play knight c2. I'm just gonna be solid. Um, it's sometimes the problem with like preparing something I've never played before. Uh, if, if he deviates from my prep, then I'll be on my own and just not understand the position. Uh, queen h5, no, let's save the bishop. Bishop might maneuver to, to c3. So I, I was up about a minute after the opening, and now, uh, now, now I'm like down a minute almost. Okay, so now I'll put the bishop on c3. Got to play quick, logical moves. I mean, black is still a little bit underdeveloped. Uh, queen d3. That's actually a very strong move. 
takes six. I'm going to play queen d3. Because if black takes, I might have rook d1, or maybe takes and then rook d1. I really have to stay focused here. So we trade, there's... Oh, there's that move too. I'm losing a pawn. Had to defend, but now I'm losing this pawn too. But there might be some rook d1 idea. But maybe not. Uh, some cool like rook f7 sack. Which probably doesn't work. The problem is takes there's 92 as a threat. So maybe takes I play some sad king h1. Okay. Yeah, I was more scared about takes, but I guess there's some risk. Bishop b4 here. Eh. In d5? I didn't calculate this at all. Whoa, it's a raid. Oh, alert box is hidden. Thanks for raiding. Hey, it's Grandmaster Gari. Appreciate you raiding. Oops. Okay, I should focus on the game. I have three seconds left. Welcome, raiders. If you're just joining, I'm about to flag. But Lile is also about to flag. Uh, let's... What to do? This move? Align with the thing? Ah, that was a really bad move. Okay. I'm probably going to lose this. Unless I win on time. Okay, so I have... This all comes down to the pawn. Which is now blockaded. <laughs> that crumbled really quickly. Uh, play this move. Defend. Ah. I should probably resign. Out of respect. But there's a pin. Let's, um, let's try and trade all the pawns. Yeah, very well played. Okay, I resign. Ah, okay, there goes my, my, uh, I guess some of my reading. But she played that well. Um, okay, shout out to Gari. I do appreciate the read. I probably shouldn't have been trying to fix the overlay in such a situation. <laughs> Uh, let me bring this game into the analysis board. I mean, she she did well to, um, I guess, again, come out of the opening alive. I took a lot of time after the opening. Man, it was another... It's unfortunate because it was nice, like, opening preparation. I was prepared for this and then this. It's like the last bit of my prep. But bishop f6... F4 probably was premature. Um, yeah, she played very, very solidly. Like, even though black's a little bit passive here, there are still squares to work with. And my D-pawn got a bit weak. Um, and here I'm probably already worse. And then here, yeah, 93. 93 was a panic move. I really wanted to take, sack my queen, and then do things, but it's only one check. The pawn would just be blockaded. Lile, did you want to analyze? Yes. It's, cool. It's, I'm in the same analysis yeah. board. Um, I'll invite you again, though. Mm -hmm. uh, wait. Uh, oh, you invited me? Okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So you you probably weren't aware of this, but I, I prepared this like right before we hopped mm -hmm. on call. 
like I was showing this to my stream. Um, and I know you took some time in this position uh, mm -hmm. yes. to decide, mm -hmm. I guess, how to develop. Um, I, I found like one game you played where you played G6. Mm -hmm. but, yes, I know. I remember this game. Uh -huh. Which G6, it's a logical move, but um, it runs into Knight G5. And this, mm -hmm. I was really excited to, um, to like blitz this out, where I would provoke e6 and then knight e4, and like gets a lot of initiative. Um, but e6, it's like very kind of the standard way of playing, and it's a line. Uh, I think you, you did a yeah. nice job neutralizing. Yes, I remember this game when I played g6 and ig5. Mm -hmm. I lost in online, so it's I decided to play much like. Um, I relaxed E6 and just develop my pieces and right, yeah. And I, 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 like the opening was new for me, so I didn't fully understand what the plans were in the position. Like a big issue is uh, the queen side pieces are a bit sidelined. Like A6 was strong to prevent the knight from coming here, and um, this this is still preparation for me. Like Knight E5, uh, I'd seen before, but Bishop F6 was a new move. And um, I, I did some quick analysis here. I should have I should have just improved my rooks and leave the knight here and not play f4, which turned out to be weakening. Uh, yes, like uh, mm, well, the thing is that uh, d4 pawn is still hanging, and you what what was your plan after you played f4? So I just wanted to reinforce the knight. Mm -hmm. Um. And like eventually, what was I calculating? I was actually calculating knight d5 looks attractive for you. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to counter with knight c4, attacking your queen. And this is really the, the main thing I calculated when I played f4 is takes, 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 takes. Uh -huh. And then it's kind of a cool setup with the knights. And your rooks tie down to the pawn, your like your your pieces are a little bit hard to develop here but you played really well and just kind of using the squares that you had like rook d8 pressuring the pawn and then i think i was just in in trouble like very quickly uh, i was expecting that this oration would be tough for me because mm -hmm. as i have played many times in online i had problems in this position but uh, yes after six like i think f4 was not necessary here yeah, um, because I always have these these uh tricks against mm -hmm. the b six knight. Mm -hmm. So if I play rook c one, it's still probably not good for you. Like, of course, you want to take on e five with material, mm -hmm. but it it just doesn't work in these lines because your queen gets hit mm -hmm. and it's tied down mm -hmm. to defending the knight. Mm -hmm. So even if if this happens, then it's already winning for white because two things are attacked, and if bishop d eight, I, I would just take it. Yes. And um, uh, and uh, uh, before before we switch to like game and analyzing, mm -hmm. I have channel points. You are like, if someone ah. redeemed these channel points, I can put headband. Oh, <laughs> so I need to put headband. So yeah, go for I have it. to choose one. Like I have so many headbands. <laughs> and literally, my my community loves watching me putting headband. So I'm gonna put this. Oh, just one minute. Mm. I think this fits well. <laughs> this red. Yeah, I, I okay. used to have a channel point redemption to uh to go blind, uh, where to okay. just wear a blindfold. But I have that turned off, uh, <laughs> at least for this this stream. 